Welcome, my dear students, to one of my favorite subjects and chapters covering basic concepts of chemical bonding. We're going to learn a lot of important stuff on this one, so buckle up. Before we get into that, though, I, of course, would love to share with you a hilarious chemistry cat of the day taken from quickbeam.com. This one says, my favorite Avenger, Fee Man. <laughs> ha! Chemistry. Now, separate from that, I also want to share an interesting fun fact or story with you. So as it turns out, I once upon a time attended a seminar in which the speaker, a chemistry professor, said, we scientists have some of the most important messages to share with the world, but we often do so quite poorly. Why? Because we frequently tend to use too much technical jargon, making it impossible for lay people to understand why what we're talking about is even important. Now, the only reason I share that is because there's a hilarious YouTube video linked to right here and floating over my head somewhere probably and in the description below, which was narrated by a professional narrator named Bud Haggart back in 1977. Now, this video is talking about a fictional device called the Turbo Encabulator. The purpose of it, believe it or not, was to show scientists how ridiculous we often sound to non-scientists, that is, to educated lay people. I invite you to watch it. I promise that if you do, you'll enjoy it. It is hilarious. All right, so after today's presentation, which follows through with additional videos that will be linked to in the descriptions below or linked to each other in end cards at the end of the video or something like that, you will gain the following skills. You'll first be reminded of the octet rule. Second, you'll be able to draw Lewis symbols for atoms. And third, and most importantly, in my opinion, you will learn how to draw Lewis structures for covalent compounds. So that's where we're headed. Let's get into it. So lifting a quote directly from our text referenced in the description below, we learn that atoms often gain, lose, or share electrons to achieve the same number of electrons as the noble gas closest to them on the periodic table. Now, the noble gases have very stable electron arrangements. Now, because all noble gases except helium have eight valence electrons, many atoms undergoing reactions end up with eight valence electrons. This observation has led to a guideline known as the octet rule, that atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons until they are surrounded by eight valence electrons. So how do we draw Lewis symbols and what are they? Well, the Lewis symbol for an element consists of the element's chemical symbol plus a dot for each valence electron. Sulfur, for example, has the electron configuration shown right here and therefore has six valence electrons. Now, you know it's six because the superscripts here, two and four, which represent electrons in the outermost 3s and 3p orbitals of sulfur, add up to equal six. Another giveaway for that, by the way, is the fact that sulfur is located in column 6a of the periodic table. 6a means six valence electrons. Make sense? Its Lewis symbol then is drawn like this. You just write down the elemental symbol for sulfur, which is an S, and then surround it with dots. The dots are placed, of course, on the four sides of the symbol, top, bottom, left, and right, and each side can accommodate up to two electrons. All four sides are equivalent, which means that the choice of where to place two electrons or one electron is completely arbitrary. So this way of drawing elements all by themselves is called Lewis symbols, which takes us to a beautiful example problem. I want you to try to write the Lewis symbol for the atoms in each of the following elements. Now, I'm not going to do this for you, but I invite you to try that on your own. Continuing then from our text, quote, the formation of covalent bonds can be represented with Lewis symbols. For example, the formation of an H2 molecule from two individual H atoms can be represented like this. Now you can see that in forming this covalent bond, each hydrogen atom acquires a second electron. That is, each hydrogen acquires an electron from the other, and then they share them so that they're able to achieve the stable noble gas electron configuration of helium, which has just a two tet. So it turns out that for helium and hydrogen in row one of the periodic table, it's not really the octet rule, it's the two tet rule. And I don't know if that's the official name, but that's what I like to call it. Now, by comparison, the formation of a covalent bond between two chlorine atoms to give a Cl2 molecule can be represented in a similar way like this. You can see that by sharing the bonding electron pair, that is each sharing one electron like this, to form a bond between the two chlorine atoms, each chlorine ends up having, achieving, or feeling as if it has a full octet of eight electrons encased in the circle around each chlorine atom, thus achieving the noble gas configuration of the neighboring noble gas next to chlorine, which is argon. Does that make sense okay? We end this video then with the most important topic, Lewis structures. In other words, this is my Lewis structures intro. So in a moment, 
I'm gonna teach you how to draw Lewis structures, but before doing this, I need to explain something. When you draw Lewis symbols, like I just showed you, you just write down the element's individual atomic symbol and then draw valence, that is outer shell electrons, around it. When drawing Lewis symbols, you do not pair electrons around the four sides of that elemental symbol until you have to. Now, this is different from Lewis structures. In Lewis structures, you actually do pair electrons together on atoms whenever that is applicable. We call these paired electrons on atoms lone electron pairs, or sometimes lone pairs for short. So how do you draw Lewis structures? Okay, to do that, we just follow a few steps. One, we add up all the valence electrons for every atom in the molecule by looking at the column in which that atom appears on the periodic table. Now, if you have a charge written over your molecule, then you have to do some additional stuff. You see, for anions, negative charges, you have to add one electron to the total number of your electron count for each negative charge. And for cations, you have to subtract one electron from your total number of electrons you're counting for each positive charge. In the process, don't worry about which electrons come from which atoms. Only worry about the total number. Two, you write the symbols for all the atoms in the molecule showing which atoms are attached to which. Then connect them with a single bond that is a dash which represents two shared electrons. Chemical formulas are often written in the order in which the atoms are connected. In many polyatomic ions, the first atom in the formula is the central atom in the Lewis structure. Usually, but not always, the central atom is the less electronegative atom. In other words, I usually grab the formula and I put the leftmost element in the formula in the middle, unless it's hydrogen, because hydrogen can only form one bond and thus cannot be in the middle of a bunch of other atoms or groups. Step three, complete the octets around all the atoms bonded to the central atom, except for hydrogen, which only wants two electrons around it. And four, place leftover electrons on the central atom, even if doing so results in more than an octet of electrons around it. And lastly, five, if there are not enough electrons to give the central atom an octet, try forming multiple bonds, such as double or triple bonds. So how do you actually do this? Well, what I'm gonna do here is show you a few example problems, which you're welcome to try on your own. And then if you wish, you can click the links that I have in the description below or possibly floating over my head as I introduce these problems to you, which will take you to some separate videos in which I draw out Lewis structures. Here are our problems. I want you to draw Lewis structures for each of the following ions or molecules, then identify those that do not obey the octet rule and explain why they do not. Separately, complete each Lewis structure below by adding electron pairs where missing and indicate the formal charge of each nitrogen atom. Next, using Lewis symbols and structures, draw the Lewis structure of silicon tetrachloride from silicon and chlorine atoms. And next, construct a Lewis structure of O2 in which each atom achieves an octet of electrons and then explain why it's necessary to form a double bond in the Lewis structure of O2. And lastly, draw Lewis structures for the following molecules. Again, I invite you to click the links floating over my head or in the description below to separate videos in which I answer many, not all, but many of these individual problems. Until next video, my dear students, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.